Welcome to Let's Learn Together, a podcast from the East Greenbush Central School District. I'm your host, Superintendent Jeff Simons. Physical education is a favorite class for many of our students. It could be because students get to run and play and enjoy exercise. It could be because they get to go outside for class in the nice weather. Or could it be that they enjoy the fun and engaging activities organized by our passionate physical education teachers? Whatever the reason, offering PE is so important to developing healthy kids. Yes, they get exercise, but they also get to work together in teams, communicate with each other, adapt to new and different situations, and they get to challenge themselves. As students get older and they begin taking health class at Golf Middle School and Columbia High School, they also learn about important topics such as mental health, wellness, and nutrition. On today's episode of Let's Learn Together, I discuss physical education and health with Red Mill PE teacher Curtis Sankey, Columbia PE teacher Courtney Hotelling, and Columbia Health teacher, Chris Laguerre. Talk about what students learn in PE and health classes and how these lessons can help lead to healthy healthy lifestyles later in life. A little later on, students share their favorite activities from physical education class. Our staff profile features occupational therapist, Katie Randorf, physical education teacher and strength and conditioning coach, Tom Labardi, offers five tips for improving your overall health. And we feature golf peer leadership in the student activity spotlight. But first, on a sad note, I want to extend my condolences to the family, friends, and colleagues of John Sawchuk, who died on Friday, September 27th. John worked at Columbia High School for 19 years, serving as the Columbia principal from 2006 until his retirement in 2018. He was a strong leader and a strong presence at Columbia and in our entire community. I had the good fortune to work with John for my first two years as superintendent of schools. My initial impressions of John held true. In our brief time working together, he would do anything he could to help a student succeed. John was a dedicated educator and an advocate for all students. He will be missed. The entire East Greenbush educational community extends its support and its condolences to John's family. We're very excited that on this episode of Let's Learn Together, we're going to be speaking about an important topic, physical education and health. In our schools, we offer PE classes for students ranging from kindergarten all the way up to their senior year in high school and we offer health classes to make sure that our students are aware of choices that they make and healthy lifestyle habits. So pleased to be joined today by three of our professionals, our physical education teachers and health teachers. I want to welcome Curtis Sankey, who is a physical education teacher and coach within our school district, Courtney Hotelling, who is also a PE teacher and a coach, and Chris Laguerre, who is a health teacher and also involved in our interscholastic athletic program. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. So when I was in school, physical education was probably much different than it is today. There have been a lot of changes that have occurred in the curriculum in physical education. I'd like to start with Mr. Sankey. Can you talk a little bit about in your experience, and I know you have taught at all levels, really. Uh, what are some of the changes in physical education that families and students might not be aware of that have occurred in your time here as an educator? Well, some of the changes I think that's happened over the years is that we're trying to get kids to be a little bit more active now. Uh, what I really appreciate is the fact that we're bringing back some of the parks. If you notice, a lot of people are starting to build more parks that we were taking away. So just trying to get families involved with their kids and their physical fitness when they're out there doing things. They're required really in our school system to have 120 minutes of physical education, both K through three and three through five. So that's important. So again, you know, those changes with kids right now, they're involved in their devices. You know, they have their computers. We allow them to have their uh, Chromebooks. So they spend a little bit more time on their games. And now, we're, you know, we've been talking to parents here in open houses to try to get them to understand and put a time limit on that so they can get out and start doing those things. If you give them a game, they have a choice. Can I be on my computer or can I go outside? Mostly the kids are now starting to choose that they'll stay on their computer and play 
games, but we're now trying to get them to be a little bit more active and getting outside instead of being, you know, inside, being more active instead of being sedentary. So, so with the concerns that uh, Coach Sankey is talking about regarding students being relatively more inactive than they have been in years past, the physical education curriculum becomes really important and what we do in school to support healthy habits is really important. As the students transition up to the high school, we may have some students that might be reluctant to participate in PE. I'd like to ask Courtney Hotelling, what, what do we do in our PE curriculum in the high school to make sure that all kids are interested to some level in what we offer in our PE options? Yeah, exactly what Curtis was saying. We're fighting the same battle with trying to get kids engaged and enjoy movement and physical activity. So we've actually kind of rechanged our program, revamped our curriculum a little bit to meet like the modern like day child. So we are offering three different sections of phys ed. We have the traditional style with all the sports and, you know, teamwork and things to do outside and game sports. And then we also have our PE 100 class, which is a weight training and personal performance class where students are working with weights and individual fitness. And then we also have our PE 120 class, which is a cardio based uh, unit where students are working on the cardio machines and focusing on their health individually in that sense. So we're trying to meet kids where they're at and find what they're interested in. That way they're choosing what they want to be involved with. So that way participation is higher. And we found great success in that so far. So sometimes Courtney, when I visited the high school, I've seen kids playing ping pong or table tennis. Mm -hmm. in the gym. I've seen them engaged in badminton competitions. Yes. I've also seen a lot of variety of activities out on the field where kids have choices or stations that they can rotate through. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of choice in the PE curriculum and how that is a motivator for the kids? We find that when kids have the ability to choose what activity they want to do, they're more apt to participate, put their put their phones away. We obviously ask them to keep their phones away, but having them have that free choice, well, I don't want to be forced to do football, so I'm going to choose tennis today, and that's more their speed and more something that they're interested in. But it is – we do see higher participation levels when students are able to pick what they're interested in. Very good. Thank you. Chris Laguerre is a health teacher. He's in the classroom teaching kids about different, uh, different ways that they can uh, maintain healthy lifestyles. Health is a broad curriculum. Uh, Chris, can you talk a little bit about the aspects of health that are included within our health curriculum and how that health curriculum varies at different levels? Um, yes. Um, we tend to focus on a lot of health and wellness and mindfulness, and it's been on the forefront of health education here for the last five, six years now. And I, you brought up a great uh, word, choice. And I, I try to bring that into my classroom in the sense of not everyone's going to learn the same. And when you're talking about all these topics that are umbrella terms, like such topics that we cover from um, middle school to high school, such as, you know, health and wellness, nutrition, physical fitness, substance abuse, misuse, you know, anything from STDs to relationships to contraceptions, everything changes and, and varies on age level. And if I could circle back to, you know, health and wellness, there's so many avenues that are always changing. And so I try to temp, uh, tend to bring in the best techniques, the most up-to-date techniques to see if we can uh, make a connection with all types of learners and all types of kids that can, you know, facilitate and learn quickly and then hopefully take something from my classes or our health curriculum to implement in their lives, not necessarily in the immediate future, but also in a lifestyle. Uh, health curriculum and health education is, is always changing. There's always new statistics out there. There's new activities. There's new techniques. So trying to uh, keep up on the you know up-to-date stuff to make sure we have the most current information to provide for kids here in the screen bush so one of the things that students are learning in health class is the relationship between their physical health and their emotional health or their mental health can you expand a little bit on some of the ideas you've talked about what do we cover in our health classes related to student mental health and wellness so um we talk about me mental health and wellness and, and obviously getting out and being physically active when we talk about endorphins and we talk about all these things but again just getting out and maybe setting a plan 
and studying and understanding as as Coach Zanke mentioned, you know, the hour and 20 minutes that they get a week in phys ed is great, but we got to get out and do more. And maybe it is just to go play pickleball. Maybe it is to go out and, uh, you know, take the dog for a walk, uh, or even engage with one another as friends and put down the screens. Everyone, you know, enjoys screen time. Great. But it's easier to, you know, maybe call your friend out and, hey, let's go walk around the lake or let's walk around the neighborhood. Let's ride bikes like we used to um, and then have that social emotional aspect. And then that gives a great avenue for a, a check-in on, on how your friends are doing or how their family is doing or what's <laughs> exciting in their lives. So um, I think the big emphasis too is mentally, physically, socially, and emotionally, how we can make those connections and continue to build those connections amongst the kids here in East Greenbush and even their families and as it extends out to them as well. Thank you, Mr. Laguerre. Uh, I want to go back to Coach Sankey for a little bit. I, I know that um, at the elementary school level, I think often it's the kids' favorite subject to come down and see Coach Sankey and be in PE class. I think they'd like it every day if they could have it. Can you talk a little bit about what some of the favorite activities of the students at Red Mill that you work with are in their PE classes? Yeah, we do so many different things down here to try to keep our students interested in what we're doing. One of their favorite things is our obstacle course that we put up. I don't know if you saw it. I know I sent Mr. Adams pictures of that, but they really love that because there's so many things, <clears throat> excuse me, that they have to work on. Like they can swing from a rope, they can crawl through a tunnel, they can climb over things. Uh, they can find their way through a maze, all these different challenges for them. They do commando crawls. It also tests their physical fitness and their strength as well. We, believe it or not, what Chris was talking about, we deal with a lot of emotional intelligence down here. Even at the lower ages, we really deal with that. How do kids learn how to cope with not doing so well? Can you talk to them then? Can they really use their interpersonal skills to you know, have a, you know, communicate with their peers while they're doing certain things? So it goes all the way down to you know, the K level when you know kids kind of get upset that they didn't do something and we kind of talk with them about how do you, you know how do you handle that, you know, and teaching them how to handle adversity at a, at a at a young age basically pays dividends when they get older. So yeah, the obstacle course down here is a big hit for our kids because there's so many things for them to do from even riding scooters and figuring their way out, you know, through that. We have our adaptive PE kids, not to forget them. This is a way that we can involve them also in our optional course. There are things within the course that they can do so they can experience success with their peers. You know, other than just being in a small setting, they can be grouped in a large setting and do some of those things. So that is something that all of our students can engage in and have a good time. Very good. Thank you, Coach Sankey. Uh, Courtney Hotelling, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, an issue that, you know, I've experienced over the years. When I, when I was a building principal, elementary school level, uh, sometimes there was a concern that the student athletes, those that participated in interscholastic athletics uh, or were involved in community-based sports, uh, may have been participating in PE activities, uh, perhaps a little bit more skilled, a little bit more aggressive in terms of their ability to be able to participate in a sport. How do we balance that athleticism with kids that may not be as inclined uh, towards athletics, but still benefit from what's being offered in PE class? How do we make sure that there's a balance of the activities so that kids, all kids, feel equal uh, participation and benefit from PE classes, those that may not be applied for athletics and those that are? Absolutely. So we actually we speak to our student athletes in the beginning of the school year and we explain that you are role models for our school and our community and we expect the most of you in physical education we tell them that you're a student athlete and student comes first so that means physical education does come first and athletics comes second so we expect them to be role models and leaders in our phys ed classes we see them them shine and engage with all students and we try to make nice even mix of our teams when we're doing competitive sports especially in regular phys ed we have a nice balance of teams we will always match up like students that are going to be you know highly competitive or medium competitive to like less competitive so we let students choose in that aspect as well but we technically find like a great a great mix i feel like our athletes are never over boasting or you know over bragging in that sense they're more so welcoming and engaging and like our, they do a really nice job 
um, involving all of our, our student body. So we see that in regular phys ed. But we see that in personal performance, especially too. We have our more experienced lifters in that class and they are so ready and willing to jump in and help out students that need help or need assistance or may need a dem an exercise demonstrated again. And we just, we're very fortunate here in East Greenbush. We have a great student body, great student athletes, and they do, they do help out and shine in that in that light for phys ed class. So I don't necessarily see an over over athleticism or over competition that they are, you know, portraying in the class. I more see them as a benefit to our classes. That's awesome. That's mm -hmm. great to hear. I want to expand a little bit on the discussion regarding high school physical education. Students need to participate in physical education to pass the course. Yes. They need to, physical education credits to be able to graduate from high school. How do we help kids who may be falling behind in PE participation, missing class? Are there ways to make up the classes or to make yep. up in order to be able to pass the class? Yep. So we are down here in phys ed. We are so flexible and we are trying to work with all students because we expect every student to have a 100. They, we tell them that they are in charge of their grade. They they grade themselves by their participation level, by you know their attire and what they're wearing and their attendance. So if students are absent, we have so many options for them to make up classes. Some students will do like a grab and go on their, their lunch period. They'll grab a quick lunch, they'll fill out a pass and they'll come down and they'll join our class and they'll get their five points back. If students have a study hall, they'll check in with their study hall teacher and they'll have a pre-signed pass where they can come and join our phys ed class. And then we also offer after school in the weight room where students can um, join in there and do whether it's riding the bike or any sort of lift um, with Coach Labardi, and they can also get their phys ed credit that way. So we offer multiple um, options for students to come down and get their phys ed credit back because we do want to see everybody pass. And more importantly, we want to see them exercise and get that activity that they miss. That's what's most important to us. So as long as the kids are like taking responsibility and, you know, being in charge of that and mindful of, oh, I missed this class. I got to make it up. Um, we, we also see a great trend in students that just want to come and join phys ed classes. Like they will, kids are funny. They'll constantly come down and be like, can I join? Can I join? Can I join? Well, you know, do you have a phys ed? Do you have a study hall? Do you have a lunch? And typically if the class size allows for it, we try not to deny students because they want to be active. Why are we going to stop them from wanting to be active? That's, that's what we preach. That's our passion. So if a student has it in their schedule and they want to come down and join and it works, we are we are more than happy to take them to get more activity. Uh, thank you, Courtney. I want to go back to Chris Laguerre for a bit. Yes. Chris, can you tell us a little bit about the levels at which the health curriculum is formally taught? So I know we start in middle school and we mm -hmm. transition the students up to the high school. Can you talk a little bit about you know, when kids start to experience formal instruction in health and how that continuum continues into the high school and what, what some of the differences are. Okay, so um, yeah, health here in uh, East Greenwich starts in seventh grade where a seventh grader will take uh, a 10 week course and then they'll have another 10 weeks in eighth grade. Um, and they start with the uh, basic topics, as I mentioned, you know, previous health and wellness, dr the drug unit, um, relationships, uh, goal setting, and kind of get their feet wet there in seventh and eighth grade. And then they'll have myself uh, in 10th grade for another 20 weeks for a, a half a semester and, or sorry, for a full semester, a half year course. And then I get to take a deeper dive um, and tend to bring them back into the fold of, hey, you've already learned a lot of this, but you have changed as a person. You have changed physically, mentally, socially, and emotionally. How do you see the world now? So I tend to have a lot of my classes is a, is a class discussion in the sense of we talk about all these various topics and they can go any different way. And I try to tend to talk to my students or talk with my students rather than at them. And of course, there's days where, you know, I'm teaching lessons and it's important um, information that's, you know, maybe uh, a new statistic that's out there or whatever the case may be. But I try to engage all learners and, you know, with project based learning and really have them work with one another and help facilitate who they are and, you know, and, and why they are feeling certain ways um, and keep that open avenue. But in in high school here, I also I, I, I would like to backtrack a little bit. I, I 
very fortunate to have Miss Amber Smith come into classes. She's our student assistance counselor here at Columbia High School, and she works at Goff as well. And she also pushes in, and sometimes it's it's a great way to just reiterate what what's so important these days. And she does a great job with. You know, obviously her expertise and up to date statistics working for Rensselaer County. And she's also another avenue where they can, if they if something is bothering them, they can talk to her. They can set up a counseling you know, session and, and, and talk. And sometimes that's all they kids need is a, is a way to uh, have an outlet, whether it's myself or someone in, in that field as well. But so <clears throat> get here in, in high school, they tend to, you know, be a little more uh, apprehensive in the sense of like, I don't really know how I'm feeling. Where can I turn to? And our district does an amazing job from top to bottom to having avenues, outlets, teachers, coaches, counselors to be here. And I, you know, I've been here long enough to see a lot of kids use our services and do wonderful things while they're here. So Chris, let me just expand a little bit. You mentioned that uh, you coordinate with Rensselaer County mm -hmm. Education and Prevention Services, and Amber comes in and helps to support what you're doing in curriculum, giving a different perspective. Yep. Uh, that's the service that we offer through the county um, for any student that may be in need, not only from a proactive standpoint, but also uh, referrals for students that may be experiencing some issues with drug and alcohol concerns. Uh, so I um, just wanted to highlight that. <coughs> And all of our uh, subjects are all of our subjects are important math science social studies english but i would think health and physical education is critically important because it's something that regardless of where kids go after high school and what they choose to go after high school leading a healthy lifestyle is going to carry them forward to be successful for the rest of their lives so what can families do chris to make sure that students understand that the health skills and knowledge that they're learning and the PE skills and knowledge that they're learning in school are supported and understood as being very important. What can the families do to support your effort? Well, I think um, I have an open line of communication with the phys ed and, you know, the health staff. And I think many of them do. I think from uh, an educational standpoint, allowing to, and, and obviously just having open house and meeting a handful of parents it was so great to see i think i had more this year than i've had in, in years past which was which was really uh warm and inviting and just say hey listen i'm 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 a person too i see your child for who they are and let's work together if there's a problem at home if there's a problem in the classroom or they just need someone to talk to i think <laughs> you do a great job here as uh you know again the coaching staff or, or health and phys ed to have that outlet you know let them know what may be going on. And we have all these resources. And as most of us here know that we can't tend to help a person if they're not being one, willing to ask for help. And two, if they can actually address that they have a need for that, that help, whether, whether it's just a conversation or if it's something like you mentioned before, if it's a substance abuse issue or, uh, you know, maybe it's an altercation with a friend. We have those tools and techniques to help them um, get through that, you know, troubling time. Thank you, Chris. So I think through the PE curriculum and the health curriculum and the professionalism of our staff, I think what we're trying to do is promote personal connection and make sure that uh, students are connecting with not only the content of what you're teaching, but also the resources that are available to help support their success. I want to shift quickly to interscholastic athletics. Each of you are coaches in our uh, athletic program. Um, what are some of the connections in interscholastic athletics kids that are on our fields and our courts can make to what they're learning in classroom, in the classroom in terms of PE and health? How do the, how do the two fit together? I'll start with Mr. Sankey. I was going to go back to the question that you asked Mr. Laguerre, which I thought was a I really love that question simply because I've always, I've been here for a long time and I wish we had like an open forum so our reach could be a little farther for parents uh, where they could actually ask us questions and we could actually give them information about what we're doing so we can have that connective piece between, you know, parents and teachers, you know, and, and administrators in our building. Uh, I think what kids learn 
you know, they build friendships when they're playing sports, right? I think they they learn how to interact with one another. I think that's a big thing within scholastic sports and kids in general. I think when you have kids that kids look up to, you know, that's a great thing if you're leading by example, if you're, you're demonstrating that, you know what, this is our school, this is our community, how can we be productive members in our community, right? I think phys ed and health goes a long way. I always say that your health is your wealth. And that's important that I tell our kids every single time I tell parents, your health is your wealth. So when we talk to kids and try to get them to understand why physical education is important, why nutrition and health is important, you know, it kind of carries a lot of weight. You know, sometimes parents don't want to hear, but if you can get them there, like Chris said, at open house, or if we can get them even in an open forum so they can voice their opinions, I think it gives us some feedback of how we could even increase our program, make our programs better to serve everyone in our community and serves ourselves. You know, we, we're always looking for feedback of how we can get better. And sometimes if you don't have that information from parents or students, you're really just uh, doing the same thing over and over again. How do we grow together? I think that's a big connected piece. And when kids are working together through PE, I think they're all growing together and they're learning from each other. That is the biggest thing that we all need to understand that we can learn so much from each other if we just start communicating and talking about those things that we kind of don't want to talk about. Very good. Thank you, Curtis. Courtney, uh, connections between your work as a coach, what you're emphasizing with your student athletes and what they learn in PE. Absolutely. Um, similar to what Mr. Laguerre said and Coach Sankey said, like we have a different environment down here in health class and phys ed class and kids are, I feel like we get to see their natural selves and they definitely feel more comfortable and in their element and they're willing to talk with us and share that stuff and be honest and open. What we try to connect between our classes and our sports is like the other coaches said, that communication, that teamwork, you know, maintaining a positive attitude, even when things don't always go our way and how to adapt to certain situations, whether it be in phys ed or in, um, you know, the game setting and really learning how to work with others. That is like one of our biggest things that in phys ed class, because like we talked about with the athletes, they're going to be mixed in with all the other student, you know, population and learning how to, you know, figure out those soft skills and those communication skills and how to like take on that leadership role and guide these kids like in class and then take that through onto your sports teams as well. So we are really trying to build strong leaders in phys ed class and in our, our sports programs as well. And we, we have seen that connection come a long way and it's, it's truly, it's been, it's been amazing. And I think we are doing such a phenomenal job and we're just going to keep pushing towards that. So kids really like focus on though. That's what we're trying to reach is like all those, all those soft skills and how they can work together and manage like stress and all the demands of life and, to reach a common goal. Thank you, Courtney. Chris, anything to add? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think they did a great job and I, I agree with them wholeheartedly. I think um, the one thing that, another aspect that I talk about with my athletes and definitely in class is what is your plan? You know, we talked about adversity. We talked about building relationships and friendships, but can we all come together and work at, uh, as a, a common goal, much like we would in, uh, your job, your career, and understand that, you know, you have a great uh, an, a ability to work well with other people, even though you may not, you know, agree with them all the time. But yet, what's are we still moving forward towards that common goal? And we see that on the athletic field all the time. And again, just to reiterate, like, you know, the leadership skills, and we all don't have to be, you know, your, you know, your typical, uh, typical, or your quintessential leader, that's you can be a silent leader. You can lead by example, you know, whether that's, you know, integrity or discipline. And I think that will transcend kids, you know, through the rest of their lives and understanding they have those different uh, aspects or those skills that don't necessarily need to be um, always promoted as, you know, we see as a, a true, you know, face of a leader. So. Thank you, Chris. So each of you have talked about life skills and life skills being learned in both PE classes, health classes, and through interscholastic athletics. My own personal experience as a student, you know, I don't often remember what I learned in math class or science class, but I do remember the life skills and the messages I learned from my coaches who are also my PE teachers. 
Um, for you, having chosen to be a physical educator or a health educator, can you think of an individual in your own experience as a student, a coach or a PE teacher that influenced you and how did they influence you? And I'll go with Mr. Sankey first. Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny. My science teacher, Mr. Latinsky, uh, was a biology teacher in high school. You know, he was saying, Curtis, what are you going to go to school for? And, you know, and I always had a business mind. And even though playing sports, he just kept saying, you know, you'd really be good at phys ed. And I said, well, Mr. Latinsky, I'm more than just a person that plays sports. You know, I do have a mind. He said, but Curtis, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is just how you relate to people and what you can offer. You know, I ultimately went to school, you know, and I got out my first job was working in the financial field for 11 years. And then, you know, I was trying to get a job in, in phys ed and then all of a sudden I get this job, you know, that I was very excited about. And then I was able to do all those things that he saw in me that sometimes you don't want to see, but there's a person there that kind of can see something more in you, even though you say, well, you know, you can do it, but he just said, this is where you would really excel. And I think that you just give more there than you know, and then, now I'm here and I, and I, I feel exactly what he saw in me. I, you know, I try to come to work every single day, very excited about what I'm doing and how I can offer more to our kids and our students here and, you know, give them some of the life lessons that I learned along the way. So I think, you know, Mr. Lutinsky saw that. I think I chose right a little later on in life and um, <laughs> yes. I'm happy about that, but I still have my financial mind. I'm not, you know, <laughs> you know all set on that. But again, you know, there's always something that somebody can, help influence you. And I, I really thank him for that. So my science teacher. Very good. Thank you, Curtis. Courtney, how about you? Uh, somebody who influenced you when you were a student? So ironically, mine's a little bit similar. I had, um, I have two different teachers. Um, first was Ox, um, my chemistry teacher. After our first test, he pulled me out in the hallway and I got so nervous because I was like, oh no, does he did he think I cheated or something? And I got a hundred on the test and he goes, what do you want to do after high school? And I said, well, I'm not really sure yet. I think maybe something in the medical field or sports. And he goes, you should go into pharmacy. You really get this. And I was like, oh, okay, sure. All right. So I applied to Albany College of Pharmacy, got accepted. In the meantime, I was speaking with my phys ed teacher and she was, I was like, well, how did you decide to do this? And she was like, I just, I wake up and I, I love what I do every day. And that statement just resonated with me. I love what I do every day. And I thought about like my path and where I could go and what type of person I was. And, you know, pharmacy is great, but I just see myself working with more people and I want to wake up and love what I do every day. And I was actually fortunate enough as well to grow up with a phys ed teacher as a mother and witnessing her passion and her drive and the things that she accomplished in her career, I was just like, I was blown away, blown away. So, and she was always there for us as a family and a mom. And I was like, you know what? I want, I want to do that too. I want to be that. I want to make a change in people's lives. I want to love what I do every day. And here I am. That's awesome. Thank you, Courtney. How about for you, Chris? Oh, well, I, I don't want to sound cliche or ironic, but um, growing up here in East Greenbush, uh, one of my biggest influences, and I have a, a whole list of coaches that were just going through that made a positive impact on myself. Um, and from where I was, and the, I'll start with the first one, and that was um, our former athletic director, Mike Leonard. He was my uh, elementary phys ed coach at Red Mill. He was my JV basketball coach and phys ed coach at when, he, when I was at Goff. Um, and I just knew when I was around 12 years old, I was like, well, how do I coach? How do I had all these amazing, you know, people to look up to. How can I be like that? And, and can I be like that? And I think his trust in me of, you know, at a young age and, and other coaches that I've come across the Hank Wysocki's, the George Zerno's, the Jim McHugh's, um, the Curtis Sankey's later on in life. Um, when I'm, doing my student teaching and all these sorts of things. Uh, Gary Holtz's, uh, I just, I was able to take some things from each one of these um, wonderful people and kind of facilitate where I wanted to go. And I, and it kind of led me to Cortland where I know Mike Leonard was a, a big proponent of that. And I'm like, Oh, what's that school? And I know it was big in health and phys ed and never in my wildest dreams did I think I would, you know, 
stay on this path, but I never got off of it. I mean, there was in different ways and it goes back to what we talk about health. Um, you know, there's brick walls. How bad, how bad do you want to do something? It's not going to keep you out. You go, you can go over it or go around it. And, you know, lo and behold, I do my student teaching a couple of years later and, and here we are. And, um, in my career now working with some of the great, um, people that have now retired and now, uh, I can have this very fortunate ability. And as Courtney mentioned before, being thankful for, you know, going to work every day and I can't believe what I do and enjoy myself. And so I kind of feel like I'm giving back. So, you know, in, in turn, Mike Leonard and all the greats that have been here before me have really molded me into who I am today. Excellent. So early on in this conversation, we talked about the importance of choice and East Cranebush School District is very grateful to Curtis Sankey, Courtney Hotelling, and Christopher Laguerre for the choice they made to educate our kids, to go into the teaching profession, the coaching profession. Our kids are very fortunate to have these fine professionals working with them every day. I appreciate that you've joined us today for this important conversation on Let's Learn Together about physical education and health instruction in our district. Any final thoughts, Coach Sankey? No, I think this is great. You know, I'm, I'm, I love working in the district. I love working with who I work with. You know, um, my passion is is teaching PE, you know, and I love doing what I do every day. So I'm happy. Thank you, Curtis. Courtney? I agree. It's um, it's an honor to work here and work with the faculty and staff and especially the students. And I wouldn't have it any other way. And we're just going to keep you know, pushing through, making, you know, new goals and, and hitting them. So thank you for having us today. Thank you, Courtney. Chris? Yes, just to reiterate, thank you for, you know, having us today. And I'm very blessed to be where I am today and work with who I'm working with and continue to grow as an educator, as a professional, and, you know, as a human, especially enjoying my time here at Columbia High School. I truly am passionate about what I do, and I, I try to convey that to my students every single day. So for our listeners out there, if you ever have a question or a concern about physical education or health, reach out to our teachers. They have a lot of information, a lot of knowledge, and they're here to support your students. Thank you all for joining us on this episode, an important episode of Let's Learn Together. And now, students share their favorite activities from physical education class. Hi, my name is Julia Crisanda. I'm an eighth grader at Goff Middle School. My favorite PE activity is the volleyball unit. Hi, my name is Joseph Primo. I'm in eighth grade, and my favorite PE activity is flag football. My name is Dylan Maychuk. I'm in 12th grade at Columbia High School, and my favorite PE activity is spike ball. My name is Chris Carter Jr. I'm a senior at Columbia High School, and my favorite part of gym class is going at the end of the year where we play backyard sports. Hi, my name is Brody Minchow. I'm in eighth grade at Goff Middle School, and my favorite PE activity is football. Hi, my name is Harper Sieber. I'm an eighth grader at Goff Middle School. My favorite PE activity is soccer. Hi, my name is Michaela Martin, and I'm a freshman at Columbia High School, and my favorite PE activity is badminton. Hi, my name is Sabine Noni. I'm a junior at Columbia High School, and my favorite gym activity is floor hockey. For today's staff profile, we feature occupational therapist, Katie Randorf. I am Katie Randorf, an occupational therapist at Green Meadow. So I work with the students on a lot of fine motor stuff, sensory, visual processing. So um, a student's main occupation in elementary school is school and play and um, social participation. So I assist the students with anything that is um, that they're struggling with that would interfere with their ability to participate in education or social participation. Um, so I work a lot with students on handwriting and making sure that um, they're able to participate in their occupation of education because if a student's struggling with their handwriting and um, you know, they're missing out on their assignments because their teacher can't read it. It's not because they don't know the material, it's because it's not legible. So a lot of my work is with handwriting, but then also sensory processing. So um, 
using different sensory modalities to you know organize the student's body to make them more able to focus and participate as best as they can in school. So I always knew that I wanted to work with kids and I actually when I was younger my my younger brother he is on the autism spectrum so we used to have an OT that would come to our house and work with him and he got services in school so I kind of got to see firsthand um, all the amazing things that it did for him he's actually he's graduated with ZMBA now and just got his first job so <laughs> he's doing really great and I wanted to be able to make that kind of a difference in other kids lives too and I always knew I wanted to work with kids so school-based was just perfect I love uh, getting to know the kids and making connections with them and um, getting to see the difference that I'm making with them and seeing them progress throughout the school year. In my free time, I like to um, hang out with my dog, take him for walks. I have a small dog, Levi. He's a Malshi Poo. He's a mix of a Maltese Shih Tzu and Poodle mix, um, but I love spending time with family. I actually used to live in Buffalo. Uh, but my whole family is from here, so I recently moved back just last, last school year, so I'm happy to be back around family and spend time. Um, we have a lake house in Galway, so over the summers I love spending a lot of time with family at the, at the lake. So far, everyone has been absolutely amazing. Everyone has been so welcoming and so hopeful, and I, get, I look forward to working with everybody this year. Physical education teacher and strength and conditioning coach Tom Labardi joins the podcast to share five tips for families to improve overall health through exercise and nutrition. My name is Thomas Labardi. I am a PE teacher at Columbia High School as well as a strength conditioning coach. My background is I went, I have two internships, one at UCLA and one at Williams College, both with the football team and sports performance. At Columbia High School, I do the strength conditioning after school with all teams. The idea that we do that we have after school is working with individuals as well as teams, as well as our regular student population that are not on teams. Um, we help them when it comes to their programming. We help them get stronger. We help the athletes that are recovering from injury that work with Sean Leggett. They pass on to me to get them back on the field as well as the court. Five tips that I can recommend to families to stay healthier and be more active is try to limit screen time, try to stay home and cook their own dinners instead of going out, taking family walks, prioritizing sleep, and then just spending more time together as a family without screens, without cell phones, without distractions. The biggest thing is we just got to get people moving again. I think we unfortunately are in a time now where everything is screen related. So I encourage families to, you know, the importance of getting up and moving is for your stress, for your cardiovascular health. Uh, this, this can help you lose weight. It can help you maintain your calories. It can help you, you know, uh, with your appetite. It can suppress your appetite when we move more and we get, you know, we're doing healthier things. Um, it helps with stress. The main thing is the stress. We have so much stress right now in our lives that I think having our families move more as, you know, as the kids see their parents moving, their kids are going to be more, um, more encouraged to move themselves. So I think the importance of the families coming together and doing, you know, taking nutrition and taking exercise more seriously as a group is going to be you know, I think that's going to be contagious for the kids and the kids are going to follow suit. And I think that's what's going to make them feel and move better. Um, one thing I always recommend to families is have non-negotiables. So what is your non-negotiable for the day? That might be a 10 minute walk with your kids. That might be a 10 minute walk with your friends. That might be a 10 minute walk with your family. It's just finding time where you prioritize that to stay healthy. This can also work with nutrition. So if you want to learn how to cook new recipes, you can bring your kids in on this and you can pick recipes that are healthy and you can take that time and cook and prepare your meals together as a family. We want to always say that just try to do this and that. That's not realistic. A lot of families don't have time. They don't have accessibility. They might not have the means. So it's, it's more about just trying to eliminate, you know, ultra processed foods. You know, I, I try to tell people this all the time, you know, the whole food, the better. Um, like cereal, for example, is loaded with sugar. So if your child starts the day off with, you know, a big full, of, you know, big bowl of whatever type of cereal, Lucky Charms, for example, it's 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 that sugar high they're gonna get, and then it's that crash. So 
I try to really encourage, like I said, whole foods like eggs are a good example of that, and yogurt, things of that, you know, things of that nature that are going to help the students and your kids feel better throughout the day. I just, it's just, we got to get moving again. That's the number one thing I can say. We, we spend a lot of time, unfortunately, in a seated position. And um, I think it, you know, I, I think it's been proven now that, you know, if our kids are moving, um, you know, their performance is going to be better. And this is in the classroom and at home. Um, I can't encourage, you know, my nine through 12th graders, I can't encourage them enough to utilize the weight room we have here because, you know, the success I see with the kids that show up every day and work out, you see it in the classroom. I hear it from other teachers saying their performance has increased, you know, their better attitudes, they're better students, they're better children. And I think that's, that's the overall goal of what we're trying to do here. Um, I think we are headed in the direction of physical education where it's going to be more about learning how to operate you know, cardiovascular equipment, learning how to operate in the weight room. And I think, you know, that's why we've developed these new curriculums, these new classes for these students to have these options. So they have autonomy. They know what, you know, they get to make the choice for themselves. During each episode of Let's Learn Together, we will have a student highlight on activity that they participate in at school. Today, we feature the Golf Peer Leadership Club. Um, I'm Alicia Spadola, I'm in seventh grade, and I'm treasurer of golf peer leadership. We do, um, sometimes we do the activity nights, um, community annual fundraisers, um, winter fest, evergreen um, cards for elders, and we do Halloween trivia and New York State exam pos positivity notes. I manage the money, and when we do Winterfest and activity nights, the money that comes in, we have this little, like, safe, and I just kind of, not safe, but, like, a box to hold it, and I just kind of manage that. I think everyone can join. Yeah. It, yeah. Just go for it. Coming up on the school calendar, there will be no school on Thursday, October 3rd. Homecoming is this coming weekend with pep rally on Friday, October 4th in the afternoon, followed by the football game that evening at 7 p.m. against Averill Park. The homecoming dance is scheduled for Saturday, October 5th from 7 to 10 p.m. at Columbia High School. And the Green Meadow Color Run is scheduled for Tuesday, October 8th at 3.45 p.m. That's it for today's episode of Let's Learn Together. Thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever you listen. Have a great day.